To the south, representing the Otago Southland District, a warm North Island welcome please, for Sarah Liley from Dunstan High School in Alexandra. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. November 2002. After much anticipation, the day had finally arrived. Jester, my wee grey pony and I, were ready bright and early for our first OMR Games. We raced furiously between bending poles, threw balls at plastic bottles, and leapt off to pick up socks while a teammate held Jester. There were cheers and a buzz in the air. This isn't an excerpt from my diary. Though for a nine-year-old on a gentle Sunday in Roxburgh, it seems a far cry from warfare. Still, as we rode, some elderly men sat watching us. They were not grandparents, cheering for their young charges. Instead, they looked on with the knowing gaze of long experience. These men were Otago Mounted Rifle veterans. Soldiers who, along with their horses, had fought for our country. This event, the Otago Mounted Rifles Games, commemorates these men and the role that horses played in the war, for their story is one not widely known. The Otago Mounted Rifles Regiment was one of four in the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, formed from mounted units of the Territorial Force in March 1911, 99 years ago. The Otago Regiment served dur during the Battle of Gallipoli when the New Zealand Mounted Rifles joined with the New Zealand Infantry in May 1915. The Otago Mounted Rifles were then withdrawn to Egypt and later they were the only New Zealand Mounted Troops to serve in France, where they played a very active role. But the death toll on the Somme, Flanders, and other battlefields in France and Belgium rose to hundreds of thousands of men. For many reinforcements who had trained with the Otago Mounted Rifles in New Zealand, their destination was not with their regiment, but instead to fill up the gaping holes left in the ranks of the New Zealand Rifles Brigade. Departing New Zealand with their horses, the Otago volunteers believed they were to serve as mounted troopers. Instead, many became privates in the infantry. Mounted riflemen were not cavalry. They were not trained in the traditional cavalry role of attacking enemy positions on horseback with swords and lances. Instead, mounted riflemen used their horses to move quickly around the battlefield. Upon gaining contact with the enemy, they dismounted and fought on foot with rifles, bayonets, and machine guns. The bravery of the mounted rifles was captured in many accounts. One by Australian light horse trooper Idris describes the actions of the infantry as they came to the aid of the mounted rifles as they came to the aid of the infantry whose attack on the city of Gaza was floundering as the Turks countercharged. Then across the gentle plain and on, uh, so, leading to the redoubts, galloped a brigade of light horse on New Zealanders. I could not tell which for dust and smoke, squadron after squadron, in a furious gallop, with a flash and the puff of smoke above them. A tremendous battle through walls of prickly pear cactus ensued. Then, as the action draws to a close, Idris describes men lay horribly bloody and dead. Others writhed on the stained grass, while all through the cactus lanes, our men were chasing demented Turks. Amateur soldiers we are supposed to be, but by heavens, I saw the finest soldiers of Turkey go down that day in bayonet fighting, in which only shock troops of regular armies are supposed to stand any chance. Human death and injuries were horrific. But what?
what happened to the injured horses? For the veterinarian teams, the standard tool was the knocking gun, which fired a steel pin into the skull to dispatch a badly injured or wounded horse. After countless hours spent caring for the brigade's animals, the mopping up of mutilated creatures on the battlefield directly after an action was a soul-destroying mission that no man welcomed. The special relationship between the Kiwi troopers and their horses was noted by Lieutenant Colonel Powell's in 1922. He described, We, as New Zealanders, are horse lovers by our British birthright. And as colonials, we have learnt to value the horse as a means of existence and not merely as a means of recreation. Our main body men were horse lovers by nature for had they not volunteered and in many cases brought their own horses? And now they are horse lovers by conviction, the conviction born of active experience. They had learned that to no man is a horse so essential as to the mounted soldier. His horse is more than a friend. He is part of the soldier's very life. Devastatingly, it was a part they were to lose, whatever the outcome of battle. Military funds did not extend to shipping the horses home. Orders that they were to be sold to the locals, no one to treat their horses badly, did not go down well amongst the men, as Powell's described. When the blokes found out, rather than contemplate the slow, cruel end awaiting their beloved horses, they upped and shot them. Of over 6,200 New Zealand war horses sent overseas, only one came home, a mare named Bess. A monument to her in the small town of Bulls in the Lower North Island alone represents the New Zealand war horse effort. The actions of the troopers and their horses is also remembered in the heart of Otago with the continuation of the Otago Mounted Rifles Games. The skills learnt at these games echo the skills of mounted warfare and the Otago Mounted Rifles veterans who come every year to watch bring them special significance. Thank you. <laughs>